Hey there, Coxie here. Good old Alice Cooper as well. Are you an Alice Cooper fan? I'm a huge Alice Cooper fan, as some of you know. But that's for another story, don't worry about that. Uh, so, I'm going to make a few videos to show you some of the tips or things that I've learned through traveling for the past nine years on how to get more out of your money or how to travel longer, slower, um, just get more out of your money, basically. I like to travel longer, and I understand not everyone can uh, because of a job, let's say, but here are some tips to help you save money or allow you to travel more because let's say you, on average, averaging out your airfares, your accommodation, your transport, your food, your alcohol, your entertainment, and so on. Let's say you're averaging $200 a day and you travel for two weeks. If you can cut that $200 a day average spend down to $50 a day, suddenly you can travel instantly. You can travel four times longer than before. So you now two weeks at $200 a day is eight weeks at $50 a day, right? I think that's right anyway. Uh, so just by cutting some costs, and you'll find it's very easy to do. You know, we waste a lot of money where we don't really have to. We can save a lot of money to increase the length of time that we travel pretty much at the same level as well. It's not compromising how much fun you have or something. So the two big, biggest costs uh, when you travel are airfares and accommodation. And I know for some Aussies, it's alcohol as well. <laughs> but uh, airfares and accommodation will be your biggest expenses. This video is about saving money or getting more out of your money with airfares. We're talking about airfares now. So I'm from Melbourne. I always fly AirAsia. I love AirAsia. Um, they're a budget airline, but they're not much different than a regular airline, really. And you pay for um, check-in luggage and you buy meals on the flight. There's not much difference. So just by going uh, budget helps you save money. But tip number one would be to be patient, right? Wait and look for specials. They have big sales. I think it's probably about 10 times where I've waited for a sale and I've bought tickets, KL, uh, yeah, not Melbourne to KL, but KL to different places, Laos, Burma, Kuching, a few others, Penang. I think I've got 10 times that I got the flight for free. I just paid the taxes. And that's massive saving. So number one is be patient. Wait for the specials, wait for the sales, and then you hit it, right? Uh, then the next one you have to be is uh, flexible, right? Because the sale will say, okay, the sale's on for the next week. For the period, let's say, January 1 until J February 28, two months. So you might want to travel January, start of January, but the cheapest tickets are mid-February, right? This is where you can be flexible if you can. And that's what I do. I'm able to be flexible so because I work online. So whenever they have a, a big special, I'm from Melbourne. So if you're from Australia, most of my followers are from Australia or Asian countries. Um, but from Australia, the, the most expensive flight will be Melbourne to KL, KL to Melbourne. So I'd search that one first. I search Melbourne to KL first. And if they say the period, let's say, is January 1 until the end of February, I will click on every day and I'll write down the cheapest flights. And they'll have a batch. Maybe, let's say they say it's $100, for example. Right, so the cheap, you know, flights from Melbourne to KL from $100. So I'll open it up, log in when the sale goes on sale, usually at midnight, and I'll go from January 1, January 2, January 3, January 4, and I'll write down the lowest probably five different uh, price points. I may not be able to get the 100, because when they say, for example, you can fly from Melbourne to KL from $100, there may only be one ticket per flight or for a few flights. So they're not lying, but they're extremely limited. The next step or uh, step price would be 110, then 120 or 130, something like that. So I may not get 100, but I might be able to get 110 or 120. 
So I'll mark the dates that have that. Then I'll say, okay, that's where I'm starting from. There might be three different dates, January 10, January 20, and February 1, for example. Then I can plan KL to Melbourne, one of those cheapest dates. And according to where they land, that gives me the window of my travel. And if I'm happy with that, cool. If not, I might buy a more expensive ticket because I want to go for two months and the window that I've bought the cheapest are only one month, for example. But that's one way of getting really good ticket prices if you're patient, waiting for the specials, and if you're flexible, waiting for, you know, looking at the dates that they say is the cheapest day rather than the date you want to fly. Be flexible and you can save hundreds, really hundreds, uh, in just doing that. Um, so be patient, be flexible. Then of course there's some other ones, a little bit like being patient, try not to travel in school holidays. They're usually more expensive. Sometimes with Air Asia they're not, but you know, be aware of that. Or uh, maybe book in shoulder season or lower season, rainy season, or uh, rather than the peak season, you know, hotter seasons. Um, I do like to travel in Melbourne winter, June, July, August, May, June, July. Um, and sort of May, June is the start of rainy season, but it's the start of rainy season, as you know. Seasons are changing, they're getting delayed. So I've been in Southeast Asia so many times in June, May, June, even July, and I haven't experienced much rain. You know, it's not, as you think, raining all day, all night. And as you probably know, in Southeast Asia, when it rains quite often, it's sunny during the day. It rains, it buckets down for an hour or half an hour in the, af in the afternoon or evening, and then it's over again. So even though it's rainy season, it's not like it rains four days in a row, usually at the start of uh, rainy season. So I think that's about it. They're the tips. That's, that, that in itself can save you hundreds of dollars just on uh, airfares. Uh, the last tip on that would be to travel slowly, right? The slower you travel, the uh, cheaper it will be for, will be. You can travel longer. Meaning, let's say every flight is $100. So if you fly from point A to point B, stay for one day and then go to point C. So one flight, $100, another flight, $100. Point B, cost you $100 per day to get there for the flight. $100, stay for a day, and then $100, that's $100. But if you stayed there for 10 days, that flight has cost you $10 now. That $100 flight, averaged out over a 10 day stay, is only $10. So the more you fly, the more expensive it is. Stay in one spot, explore that spot more. So rather than going, for example, three weeks to Thailand, one week Bangkok, one week Chiang Mai, one week Phuket. Spend three weeks in Phuket or three weeks in Bangkok, explore it more, and you've just saved flights for those other two. So travel slower, travel longer, be patient and uh, flexible, and you can save a lot of money just on airfares. So the next video I'll do is on accommodation. See you then.